voice message is transmitted. continues to affect the United States of America as well as other nations. All persons of the United States are being instructed to take extreme measures to preserve themselves. The world still has an opportunity to save countless lives. Right now, the world has the responsibility to act, to step up. There's this really awesome place in San Diego that's a resource for some, a respite for many, and a well-kept secret to others. Nestled in a canyon in City Heights, among commercial and residential development, this tiny gem has been giving out advice about organic gardening for years. This is the story of how city farmers came about, and of the man many fondly refer to as Farmer Bill.
the history of the nursery started way back, probably in 1962-63. My dad owned some property over on 94 before the freeway was put in. It was eminent domain, and so he had a move, so he got the money from the city, and he bought this property, which was a big canyon at the time. The only thing that was here was a little building that Nate's uh, garden grill is in now. My dad built a couple buildings here as time went on. Uh, it was kind of an interesting thing. He never took out a loan. He always used our baby grand piano and used it as collateral borrowed from friends. He had a little business here. Um, he sold firewood, manure, and he used to flag down trucks that sold eggs or somebody that was selling bread, and he would sell it. I have a little picture in the shop of us selling Christmas trees for 95 cents and up. So it was kind of like he planted the seed in my mind. So I was in high school and I used to hang out with my uh, teachers because I was a nerd, didn't have a lot of social life. And I was sitting one time and I said, well, I just quit my job at SeaWorld. I don't know what to do. And they encouraged me. They said, why don't you just open a retail nursery? I said, that would be really cool. So I went to my dad and it was just a small little piece of the property here that was empty. And he said, uh, why don't you use that? So I got a little car when I was 16 and I ended up coming down here and started the business. I did that until I was 18. I finished high school and I decided I wanted to move out of the house. So I bought a used 15-foot travel trailer and I moved it down here. I went with a hose and extension cord. That was my home. When I made up the name of it, I liked gardening and I always saw pictures of people that were farmers and I said, you know, I live in the city. So I came up with the name City Farmers. Now that everybody's into farming and homesteading and stuff, it kind of fits in really well. In the beginning when I started the nursery, uh, since I gardened at home with my dad, I decided there wasn't any use for chemical fertilizers and chemicals, and so I stayed away from that pretty much. Um, I found that everything kind of grew if Mother Nature helped you and that you use some organic fertilizers like steer manure at the time, and chicken manure was available. So the evolution of the nursery basically is to keep thinking of what I can do next, what people want it. Now, though it's a thriving business, I look at it a little bit different. I look at the nursery as a destination point. I look at it as some place for people to come and enjoy farm animals. You know, my farm animal collection has grown over years. But I look at it as where can you go in the city and see farm animals or any animals without it costing a lot of money. And I'm so happy to be in City Heights because the inner city kids don't get to see this. And for them to come and be excited and tell their parents I want to go down to the farm and to see the animals or see each animal has a name and they know the names of the animals, it's really great. And the one really neat thing about the growth and about the nursery now is I have almost fourth generation of kids coming in here. And also I have a 4-H group in San Diego now, first one in the city. Hopefully there'll be more, but it's the first one and it's in City Heights. Wow, now. Well, it's been 44 years. I call it crazy, crazy good. Um, the nursery has developed so much that it's so much fun to have because of the diversity that we have. It's really a family business. So what's happened is, is my kids are now involved and the neat thing about it is they grew up here. So they're well aware of how the business works. And so the nursery will be here for another generation now. You know what my favorite smell is? Uh, no. Goat. I love the smell of goats. I love it. They should make a perfume that smell like goat. <laughs>
life for me to leave this world to which we are all chained. My friends were never there for me. Never seemed to care. What does he mean by that? My friends were never there for me. Never seemed to care? What's he talking about? I figured you were his friend also. That's why I called you over to show you this. It just doesn't make any sense. I don't understand it either. I have no words. You were there for him, right? Well, we hung out with him last month. That was a few months ago that we hung out. Oh, right. Maybe he was talking about his other friends. Co-workers. We were really the only ones. He kept a tight circle. All I know is this note does not make us look very good. It makes us look terrible. No. His family still needs closure. This seems wrong. We're just going to do a quick rewrite. All the main themes will be there. I'm just going to take out the bad parts about us. Yeah, when you put it like that. I had a good life. My friends treated me well. And I liked my family. I guess it was just time for me to go. Okay, I'll call the cops. You go home and mourn. You're a good friend. I just want you to know that if you ever need anybody to talk to, I'm there for you. And I'm also there for you if, if you need anyone to talk to. Oh, I know, I know. I just want you to be able to say that I was the friend who was there for you. I do think that about you, and uh, I hope that you feel the same about me. I do. I do. I do. Ha, ha, ha. Uh. <laughs> I'd like to report a murder. So wait, you're telling me you've never tried it before. Is that really hard to believe? Well, that's what they're known for. They're known for their burgers. Yeah, that and their pink lemonade. <laughs> you laugh, <laughs> but try it. Try it, it's not gonna kill you. Okay, that's actually I can't believe you just did that. Did what? That. You used my straw. And? And it's common courtesy to lift the lid and drink from the cup. Not my fucking straw. I don't know where your mouth has been. Problem solved. Really? Littering? That's your solution? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, not only do I not have a straw, I have to deal with your... this about the straw would you please just get over it I get it I fucked up I'm sorry that's what I wanted to hear 
Would it make you feel better if I went and got you another lemonade? Maybe. Okay. Let's go crazy. By the way, that was a great shot. I know. Is everything going to be okay? Yeah. Sorry. It's just my stomach. Feels a little sick from dinner. I don't know. Well, do you want to come inside and chat? Whatever this is. I think I better just sleep a bit off. So, uh, because my stomach... Well... Thanks for the ride.
Have either of you ever been in love before? It's a very important factor in building a happy marriage. But tell me, how do you know it's real love? The kind you can get married on? Ever since I first met Larry, I haven't wanted to date anyone else. And besides, I haven't even had one quarrel with him. Might well ask yourself some questions before you get too serious about marriage. Oh, but what do you mean? What sort of questions? Are you real friends? Comrades, pals, through thick and thin? So even though we're close together here, we don't know how far apart we are there. That's right. Well, you see, if you're too far apart psychologically, if your backgrounds are not similar enough, it can cause a great deal of argument and unhappiness until... Yes, but can't we settle these differences after we're married? And if you aren't successful? Gee, hon. Hey, we need to talk. It doesn't take an engineer to see that. Let's talk. Bad part of the curve of these crafts. All of them. Yeah. I see our chances aren't so good now. What are we going to do? I thought you were going to... and your skin gets so tough. You could swear you were bulletproof. Spotlight. You know. There's no armor for a good kiss.
those dirty red lights. way to clean money. Inherit it. Chinatown Spotlight. You know. There's just no armor for a good kiss. Where were you? Just out, thinking. It's late. I had a lot of thinking to do. I burned dinner. So you burned dinner? Not, not my dinner. My dinner was fine. Your dinner. I put it back in the oven, turned it up as high as it could go till it turned black. You want it? Shouldn't have done that. I know. Just seemed like the kind of thing a mentally drained, sex starved, pill popping housewife would do, so I did it. I knew you'd probably come home late, but I made it anyways, and now it's going to waste. How many pills? A bunch. Don't change the subject. I will not talk to you. No, you no, this. you don't get to do that, okay? Pills are not the problem. Pills are not our problem, Joseph. I want to know where you've been. I, I want to know what's I going on. I can't get you to talk sensibly about anything Stop when you do it. this. Stick to the subject. I don't know what that is. You have something you want to ask me, then ask me. Go. I can't. Scared. You're scared of... This is crazy. I'm going to bed. Tell me without making me have to ask, please. When you walk through that door at night, your face is never exactly the way I remember it. I get surprised by something, something mean and, and hard about the way you look. Even the weight of you in bed at night seems unfamiliar. And you think you're the only one who hates sex? I do! I, I, I hate it with you! It's, it's like a, a punishment. It was wrong of me to marry you. I knew! You know what? I you know what? You were... I can always tell when you're taking pills because it makes you red faced and sweaty, and frankly, I that's the very ask reason. Me then ask! Ask, damn it! What the are hell you are you? Homo? Are you? If you try to walk out of this room, she'll help me down! Does it make any difference? Does it? That I might be one thing? No matter how wrong or ugly that thing is, as long as I have fought with everything I have to kill it, does it make any difference? What do you want from me, Harper? More than that? For God's sake. There's nothing left. There's nothing left to kill, Harper. I'm a shell. As long as my behavior is what I know it has to be. Decent. Good. That alone. What difference does it make?
afraid of dying. I reckon all we got is to decide what we do with the time given to each of us while we're on this earth. Yeah. Well, I guess stealing ain't easy, is it? If stealing was easy, everybody'd be doing it. Isn't that what you always say? I reckon everyone's got to make a living. I'll fill you in on a little secret. Life ain't as complicated as everyone makes it out to be. How do you mean? It's all predetermined. Think it through. The man you've killed. Flatnose Curry. Harvey Logan. Whole wild bunch gang. Hell, that's what you're known for. Yeah. But I never killed no boy 14 in the back. Yeah. And neither have I. But I've killed a lot of bad men. Like I said, everyone's got a covenant and a purpose that's destined. If it ain't done, who else is gonna do it? Yeah. You learned that from Geronimo, did you? You throw out them names, I'm gonna throw them right back at you. I know you. The one and only. The one and only scout that can break the Apache line and track down Geronimo. <laughs> Just how was it fighting with them Rough Riders against them Mexicans? Spaniards. Say again? Rough Riders fought Spain, not Mexico. It was in Cuba. Yeah, yeah, well... I know what happened, and I know what's going to happen. Yeah, like I said, it's all predetermined. Standing beside you at the hour of your death, be the ghosts of all those men you've killed. Angry. You could have altered what was foreshadowed. Now I must go on to hell with them. Marshal, it's time. Ranchers, homesteaders, there's got to be law. And this ain't it. Maybe so, but your kind of law ain't for hire anymore. I don't care who's paying. You had your trial. I was tried and convicted before I ever left the ranch. They just used my calling card to be rid of me and not get caught. Guilty? Innocent? You're still gonna be dead. We'll let history sort it out. I see myself more as just the harbinger of death in defense of that law and the rights of men and their property. All right, 
I'm gonna ask you some questions, is that okay? Yeah. Um, what's your name? Stella Hyde. How old are you? 58. 58? Do you think that's true? No. <laughs> Do you know what year it is? Yeah, 68. 1968? Yeah. Um, do you remember anything about your childhood? No. Not one thing? You don't have any kind of special memory or anything? Uh -uh. And do you, did you have any kids? Yeah. Pam and Gail. What did you want to be when you were younger? Nothing much. Were you ever married? Yes. To who? Ray. What do you know about Alzheimer's? I don't know. You don't know anything about Alzheimer's? Uh-uh. What do you think it does to you? It affects your head. Do you know you have Alzheimer's? No. Do you feel like you have Alzheimer's? No. Do you feel like you have anything wrong with you? No. Mentally, you feel fine? Yeah. If you had one piece of advice you would give to someone about life, what would it be? Don't live. <laughs> Why do you say that? Life's too short. Uh, you think you've lived a good life? Yeah. Yeah? What's the secret to it? Having a good life? There isn't a secret. You just live it. <laughs>